they enter the body with a sip of water, or a piece of meat, or directly through your skin. Some grow up to a meter length, the others are invisible to the eye, but can blind or kill. Some of them live in the intestines for years, even for decades, imperceptibly poisoning the human. Others migrate through all the body, leaving behind heavy traces. These are round worms, or nematodes, the most tenacious and ubiquitous parasites on the earth. How do these creatures enter our bodies? Why are they so difficult to be detected? And which of them are the deadliest? Today, the shocking truth about round worms. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. Let's get started. All round worms can be separated into two big groups. One is intestinal, that you can already guess, uh, love to live in intestines, in the guts. The other are non-intestinal, living in tissues or blood or lymphatic system. Today we will talk about intestinal infections. This globally distributed parasite is common everywhere, but particularly common in uh, uh, hot and tropical countries with poor sanitation. This is their space parasite. Why? Because during experiment on International Space Station in 2017, its eggs were the only ones that survived. These eggs are capable of carrying radiation that could kill human within seconds. Females grow up to 40 centimeters. This is the size of adult cat. But record in 2020 was a 1.8 meter long ascaris removed from the child in India. The eggs can withstand boiling for 5 minutes or uh, cooking at uh, 60 degrees, for example, Celsius, for 1 hour. At minus 30, they can stay alive for 10 years or more. I would remind you that your uh, fridge freezer has only minus 18 or minus 20. Stomach acid cannot kill uh, these eggs, that's why it's very easy to get this infection. One female parasite lays uh, 200,000 eggs per day and 6 million per lifetime. One gram of soil, very few, just one gram, may contain up to 1,000 eggs of Ascaris. A meta-analysis of 12 studies showed a strong association between infection with Ascaris and high levels of IgE, allergic immunoglobulins, antibodies, and also with dysfunction of uh, T cells, and also with allergies to milk and eggs. In Brazil, children with ascariasis were three times more likely to be diagnosed with uh, cow milk allergies. And after deworming, after treatment, 68% were free of this allergy. Nowadays, it is considered that 1.5 billion people are infected with Ascaris. It's every fifth human on the Earth. Light infections can be asymptomatic, but heavy infections can cause some abdominal pain or discomfort, malnutrition, or even intestinal obstructions and may need surgery sometimes. Also, it can cause pulmonary um, symptoms because um, of a life uh, cycle of this parasite, because a larva must go to, through lungs and be swallowed by the patient, by the human, to get into uh, his guts. Next one is whip worm. Why is it whip worm? Because you can see its shape. Here is thick and here is very thin, looking like a whip. Whip slash. I would say it's a friend or brother of Ascaris because they love the same conditions, they live as neighbors, they have very similar me methods of getting into humans, they reside in uh, cecum or colon. Light infections can be symptomatic, but heavy infections may cause uh, some abdominal symptoms or uh, mm, chronic bleeding that you may not notice, but you will see. Uh, anemia, low hemoglobin and uh, weakness, tiredness, or sometimes even uh, uh, the falling out of the uh, rectum. It's called uh, rectal prolapse. You need to test stool uh, to check for these infections. 
Sometimes you can see it on colonoscopy or you can do PCR, finding genetic material of parasites in feces. Next one, hookworms. Why are they hookworms? You see this smiling little parasite, he has nice teeth here, and this has uh, uh, the cutting plates. Why do they need this? Not to smile perfectly to you, but to cut through your skin while you're walking barefoot. Yes, they like to bite the feet of the travelers. These are found in warm uh, countries. Larvae penetrate the skin uh, and uh, uh, go through it, causing itching. And then it can migrate through blood vessels to lungs, then get coughed up, then swallowed. And uh, then they get finally into intestines. And adult hookworms can live from 5 to 7 years in the host, continuously feeding on the blood from the wall of the gut. That's why you can guess already light infections can be asymptomatic, but heavy infections can cause iron deficiency, anemia, weakness uh, because of blood loss, and uh, fatigue, abdominal pain, uh, and even stunted growth in children. You do stool microscopy, uh, you do culturing methods, uh, you do uh, PCR, uh, serology, finding antibodies in the blood. And the interesting fact that a human who is infected with these hookworms may uh, lose up to 200 ml of blood per day. And this heavy bleeding that happens every day, uh, it can lead to heart failure and even death. But mostly they are called lazy germs because they cause this chronic blood loss, you don't notice it, uh, you get anemic, you get um, chronic fatigue syndrome. One more parasite who loves to bite your feet. This is this strongyloides. This is one of the stealthy and dangerous and unique parasitic worms uh, capable of persisting in your body for decades. Why? Because it can reproduce inside your body. Stay there. Not just make eggs and uh, throw it into the outer world but it can reproduce. That's why the whole family and the, his grandchildren will live in your body. You also get rash at the site where it penetrates the skin. The rash can be moving very fast, up to 10 cm per hour. It's itching and it will mature also in the guts uh, after approximately three months after their um, infection. That's why it can be quite hard to uh, make a diagnosis of acute infection. And it, this chronic infection can have non-specific symptoms like uh, high eosinophils, so different allergic uh, symptoms. Uh, it can resemble asthma or um, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease. It can cause weight loss, malnutrition, different deficiencies. And there can be also severe cases if the patient has uh, very low immunity. For example, in HIV or getting chemotherapy. It can multiply uncontrollably. And millions of uh, these larvae will be swimming in all the bodies, the lungs, the gut, the brain. And uh, uh, the damage to gut, for example, can cause bacteria to get into the blood and cause sepsis. And death rate in such situation is up to 87%. So it can be very dangerous. How do you uh, diagnose it? Again, you detect larvae, not eggs, in stool. Uh, that's why the feces must be very fresh. Fresh. Also, there are some other highly sensitive methods, quite specific for this worm. Beerman method, for example. Or you can even culture it on uh, the plates to grow larvae and watch them. Also, you can do PCR to find genetic material of these uh, parasites. Who is this little, little cute worms? Ah, these are pinworms. They're very small, but they are famous in um, the countries with uh, more moderate climate, because we know that uh, previous parasites, they love more hot countries, but this prefers moderate climate. Mostly it infects kids up to 10 years old. Outbreaks frequently happen in schools or uh, different daycares and households. They reside in large intestine or in rectum. And this adult mama worm comes out of their anus at night when everyone is sleeping and lays a lot of eggs around. This causes a lot of itching and the kid uh, scratches it, it gets under the nails and then touches everything. In girls it may cause the spread into their vagina or urinary tract. Then they put these hands into the mouth, reinfect themselves and they can live up to three weeks 
outside on the toys and there is some association with bruxism when um, the kids like with their teeth at night preferred test say just use the scotch tape on the anus of kids and see under microscope this is the best test for this parasite if it's found the person must take antiparasitic drugs like mebendazole or pirantel but after deworming uh, you also need to clean everything wash everything in hot water trim the nails uh, disinfect uh, all the toys and surfaces otherwise you can get this infection again so again stool microscopy is the standard uh, diagnostic test for ascaris trichuris and hookworms but you need to repeat testing because uh, the um, cycle of parasite is not um, the daily and sometimes you can miss eggs three to five times you may need to repeat this test Strangeloides uh, requires special methods like uh, serology or Berman's or PCR. Pinworms are best diagnosed with a tape test. And PCR, PCR and serology are also helpful when uh, microscopy is negative, but we still suspect the parasitic infection. PCR is very highly used for, for example, strongyloides or hookworms. So, dear friends, it's all for today about the intestinal roundworms. Next time we will talk about other roundworms that can crawl and swim in the body, damaging organs. Thank you for watching this video and thanks to everyone who is supporting this channel. And I'm waiting you in the next videos. Goodbye. Don't be